Okay. It says, uh, okay, we're recording. Okay, so let's start our mini workshop with the talk of uh, Daniel Peralta Salas, who will talk about contact structures and the drama fields on the torus and the sphere. Okay, thank you. So, first of all, uh, thank you, Eva, for organizing this mini workshop. It's a great idea uh, to have this meeting uh, between the thesis defense of uh, Arnau and Cedric. So, first of all, congratulations, Arnau. Uh, but I didn't see Arnau here. So, Eva, where is Arnau? Arnau is, is uh, indeed, he's working at La Caixa already. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. I thought yeah, he's still he, no, 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 yeah, celebration. No, after celebration. Okay. <laughs> so he took he took days off until yesterday to do the defense and no extra day. Okay, so has to a, celebrate. He has a serious job, so okay, he cannot. Uh, <laughs> he's a serious person. He has to go to to the job. Okay. <laughs> And also, Cedric, uh, I cannot congratulate you yet no. because your defense is tomorrow, but um, I'm sure uh, it will be a great presentation. So good luck. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Uh, I don't know if uh, I like to interact uh, with people, so I like questions during the talk. Uh, for online talks, this is not as easy as for uh, live talks, but maybe, Eva, if someone wants to ask something, uh, just uh, you can switch on a uh, microphone and, and ask. Or... Yeah, well, the boss of this meeting finally is Cedric. So Cedric is Cedric the one is the who can switch on the microphone. Okay. So but Cedric, I can uh... knock in his head if yeah. this is necessary. Uh -huh. So if someone wants uh, to ask something or to comment, uh, you can just uh, ask Cedric and he will give you permission for, for that. <laughs> okay, so, so let's start. So the title of the talk is uh, Contact Structures. Uh, on Beltrami fields and Beltrami fields on the torus and the sphere. And I'm going to report about recent results uh, obtained in collaboration with Radu Slobodeanu from the University of Bucharest. So first, uh, in, in my first slides, I want to introduce, to recall for uh, those of you who already know about this stuff, uh, what's a Beltrami field and some properties. So the so our ambient space uh, it's uh, is a is a Riemannian three manifold. I will assume that is closed, so compact, uh, no boundary, mg, and uh, I will denote by mu uh, the the volume form, the Riemannian volume form, the, the volume form associated with the metric g. So in this context of a Riemannian three manifold. Uh, we can define the, the curl operator or rotational operator as uh, the only vector field, uh, given a vector field V, smooth, the only vector field that satisfies uh, this identity here. So, uh, so you have mu and then the, the curl of V, which is a vector field, uh, is defined this way. It's uh, if you contract uh, with, with the three form, the three volume form, uh, this is a two form, and then you ask this uh, to be equal to the exterior deri derivative of alpha, where alpha is the dual uh, of the of the vector field V using the metric G. So since mu uh, is a non-degenerate uh, volume form, then this has a unique solution, which is the curl. And of course, in the case of the Euclidean space uh, with, uh, with Euclidean metric, you recover the standard definition uh, using coordinates, Euclidean coordinates, x1, x2, x3, standard definition of the curl operator. So now we are ready to define what a Beltrami field is on a Riemannian 3 manifold. So, um, so we say that, uh, that V, a vector field on Mg, is Beltrami if it satisfies the following system of equations. So the first one is that the, the curl of V is aligned uh, with V. So it's everywhere proportional uh, to V uh, with a proportionality factor F that does not need to be constant. So in general, it's a non-constant function, smooth. And there is the second <coughs> condition, which is that the divergence of V is equal to zero, which is just an incompressibility condition. So as I wrote here, uh, this div is the divergence operator and being divergence free just means that the flow of the flow defined uh, by the vector field V is volume preserving. Okay, so now I want to introduce a few properties, important properties of Beltrami fields. The first one is that um, 
this function f, this proportionality factor f in the equation, in the defining equation of the traffic field, this is a first integral of the vector field uh, v. So, which means, uh, I wrote here, uh, that it means that uh, that the vector field has a, a sort of laminar behavior in the case that f is constant, with, which just uh, means that v in a first integral, the, the integral the integral curves, the, the orbits of v, lie on the level sets of the function f. So that's why it's a sort of laminar behavior. And uh, it, it's uh, this property that f is a, is a first integral of v is very easy to check. Just taking the divergence at both sides of the equation, you, you conclude that the gradient of f uh, dot v is equal to zero. So it's it's a very simple property. A second property, uh, which uh, which tells you why uh, Beltrami fields are important, is that they are uh, in fact uh, stationary solutions of the Euler equations on on the manifold on on MG. And here Euler equation, I mean the the, the equations, the system of partial differential equations that models that describes uh, the dynamics of an incompressible and implicit uh, fluid flow of the manifold. So, so Beltrami fields are particular solutions of this that are stationary, they don't depend on time. And uh, they also appeared in other contexts, uh, Beltrami fields, but uh, they have probably different names. For example, in the context of MHD, that is of uh, magnetohydrodynamics, they are known as force-free fields. And they appear, for example, when modeling uh, the stellar stellar atmospheres and uh, and fulgurations of the sun, etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a particular case of curl uh, of uh, Beltrami field, uh, which are the okay. the yes yes. There's a question of Nikita. So yes. I, I yes. will ask it straight away. Yes, um, please. Well, please. maybe Anastasia should ask it because she's a chairman. Um, ah. Well, he asks, are all the stationary solutions of all equations necessary but atomic fields? No, no, it's, uh, there are, this, there is um, a sort of, of dichotomy. There is a function that is called the Bernoulli function, okay, that appears in the, in the system of stationary equations. So Beltrami fields are those solutions which correspond to constant Bernoulli function. So in, this case, in, in the case that this function is not constant, there are many, many other uh, solutions so it's not it doesn't exhaust all, all the all the stationary solutions but they are important in some in some sense uh, i'll mention something later mm -hmm. okay for, in particular they are important if you want to uh, to describe a turbulence or cha chaotic behavior okay mm -hmm. so um, there is a, a particular case of Beltrami field uh, which is uh, when the function f the defining function f you have this f here, the proportionality factor, is a constant. So let's call it lambda. Uh, so curl of v is equal to lambda v, uh, non-zero constant. Uh, then in this case, uh, we say that these are uh, curl eigenfields. The name eigenfield uh, because it, uh, it's reminiscent or it's uh, this an analog to the, to the definition of, uh, of the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian, for example. So, so a V satisfying this equation with constant lambda is like an eigen uh, vector valued eigen function, if you want, of the curl operator. So, in particular, just uh, writing this equation, curl of V equal to lambda V, uh, you don't need to ask uh, the second condition, divergence of V equals zero, as extra condition because it is implied. It is already implied by this first equation. Just if you take the divergence at both sides of the equation, divergence of curl of, of curl is zero, so lambda divergence of V is zero, since lambda is assumed to be non-zero, the divergence is, is zero. So uh, any solution of this equation, any curl eigenfield, is a particular case of uh, Beltrami field. Okay? And um, it's, uh, these are sometimes called strong Beltrami fields, but uh, during this talk, since uh, I'll not consider any more Beltrami fields uh, with non-constant f, with non-constant factor. When I talk about Beltrami field, I will always mean this Kell eigenfields, uh, these Beltrami fields with constant factor uh, lambda. Okay. So just uh, a remark about this spectral problem. This is a pretty well-defined spectral problem. So it's like uh, 
it's very similar in, in many senses to the to the spectral problem for the Laplacian on a closed uh, manifold. It's the, the curl is not elliptic, but it it, it already it uh, also defines a, a self-adjoint operator uh, with an appropriate uh, domain, and which has a discrete spectrum. Uh, so this lambda can take only well infinitely many uh, values, but uh, discrete discrete points in in R. And um, this is defined on, on the space of exact uh, vector fields. So uh, exact means that uh, that the vector field is divergence free, and and it's more than divergence free. The the contraction of mu with v, which is closed because v is divergence free, is also exact. Uh, so in, in particular, you you can check that any Beltrami field is exact field because well, it's uh, v is, is the curl of another vector field, which is v over lambda. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this, uh, so the curl operator, it's a good uh, self-adjoint operator on this space, uh, and so it defines a, a, a nice spectral problem. And the eigenvalues are infinitely many but discrete, and uh, but a difference with the Laplacian, with the spectral problem for the Laplacian, is that they have sign. So it's not a positive definite operator, the curl. So the eigenvalues, they are there are negative eigenvalues and positive eigenvalues. The multiplicity uh, is it can be bigger than one, but uh, it's always finite, finite multiplicity. And uh, this VK, uh, all the all the eigenfields uh, defines a, a basis, an L2 basis in the of the space uh, for the space of exact vector fields. Okay, mm -hmm. so this exists on any on any on any manifold, on any closed manifold. You have the curl. The curl is is a well-defined operator in the appropriate uh, space. And you have uh, the spectrum that is discrete, and you have the corresponding eigenfields that exist uh, for all these eigenvalues. Okay, mm -hmm. and they are smooth actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I want to introduce uh, another object in the in, in this talk, the other star that appears here, which is uh, this contact geometry, contact structures. So let's. So let's look again at the at the equation, the Beltrami equation, uh, curl of v equal lambda v. Let's write the equation in terms of differential forms. So consider uh, consider alpha, the dual. So we have a metric in the manifold. So consider the the dual with the metric, uh, uh, the dual of the vector field v. We call it alpha. So uh, it, it's very simple to check that the Beltrami equation reads in the in the differential forms language uh, this way. So the star d alpha is equal to lambda alpha, where uh, a star is the Hodge star operator, and d is the exterior derivative of differential forms. So we have this, this equivalent uh, problem uh, for the for the Beltrami fields in terms of, of uh, forms. So now the observation is that if v is a Beltrami field that doesn't vanish on m, I mean that doesn't have any zeros, any any point where it vanishes. Then, if you compute alpha, which the alpha, since the alpha is lambda star alpha, so you you get here lambda alpha which star alpha. So alpha which star alpha is if is of course uh, alpha square computed with the metric uh, times mu the volume form. So this is positive because we assume uh, that v does not vanish at any point of the manifold. Okay, and assume that lambda is positive. So therefore, uh, the conclusion is that this alpha, the dual form, the dual one form associated to the Beltrami field, to a non-vanishing Beltrami field, is a contact form on the manifold M. And actually, uh, any contact form defines a, a red field. So the red field turns out to be the Beltrami field, or almost, almost the Beltrami field. The Beltrami field up to this uh, reparametrization, okay, which is the norm V divided by by the norm of the norm of v square, okay, or alpha v. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so after this observation, we can introduce the following definition. So uh, we say that um, so alpha is uh, in the case that v does not vanish. Alpha is the contact form, um, and the, and the kernel, the corresponding two-plane distribution. Uh, Psi is the contact structure which is engendered by the non-vanishing Beltrami field V. So any non-vanishing Beltrami field uh, has associated, engenders 
a contact form, a contact structure in this very natural way, just simply considering uh, alpha, the, the dual one form. Just an observation, a remark, although I'll not, uh, I'll not emphasize this much, is that uh, the assumption of V uh, not vanishing at any point is uh, strong. Uh, actually, it's typical, or in some, in some sense, it's typical, it, the, the typical situation is that Beltrami fields, curl eigenfields, uh, have zeros, vanish at some points, non-degenerate, so isolated zeros, but they usually vanish. Uh, but still, in some situations, uh, of course, you can prove that there exists no vanishing Beltrami fields. And uh, even for infinitely many eigenvalues, you can check that there exists uh, Beltrami fields that doesn't vanish, that don't vanish. Okay, I'll, I'll comment about this uh, later when we focus on the sphere and on the torus. Okay, so now after this observation that any non-vanishing Beltrami field defines uh, a contact form, a contact distribution, we have to, it, it's important to recall this, this very beautiful uh, theory, uh, which was uh, developed uh, by, by John Knight and Robert Grice in the early 2000s. And uh, the main theorem of the, of the theory, well, the starting point of the, of the theory, is this correspondence theorem, uh, which says that, this already I, I mentioned it before, any non-managing Beltrami field is the red field up to rescaling of a factor, of some contact form. The contact form is just the dual form uh, using the metric. And conversely, if you have a contact form on a manifold and, um, and a red field, then it is a curl eigenfield for some uh, Riemannian metric on the manifold. And we say uh, actually that the metric G is said to is, is compatible with the compact uh, with the contact form alpha. The, the metric G is not unique. There are many choices of this metric. Uh, the simplest choice is this one, probably, that appears in here below. So you have uh, <clears throat> the composition of the metric in the alpha part, alpha times alpha, plus the orthogonal part. Recall that uh, the, the red field is in the kernel of the alpha, but is transverse to alpha. So this Anastasia, is we have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was waiting for, for a small pause. So there is another question from Nikita. Should I unmute Nikita or just read it? You know? Well, Just, so the question is that if a Beltrami field has zeros, does that translate into some kind of singularities in the contact form? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, there are singularities, uh, generically isolated singularities. So away from these singularities, um, your, your one form is contact, is uh, contact in the usual sense, no singularities, but, uh, but then you are in an open manifold. So indeed, it's very interesting to analyze these singularities and how one could extend the uh, contact geometry or all, all the stuff, all the stuff in the contact geometry theory, uh, to one forms that are contact with singularities of some control type. But uh, this is um, there are some there are some people who have thought about this, but uh, I don't think there is a, a very developed theory uh, in this direction. But but, but yes, the answer definitely is yes. It, there, there are singularities of certain type, isolated singularities of the contact form. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. That sounds exciting. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, typically, generically, they are non-degenerate. They're hyperbolic. So you have a, a saddle structure. So you have a local model. So maybe you can you can do some things. But uh, but I don't think it's uh, completely developed. Uh, but maybe in the following years. Yeah. So, uh, so as I said, there, there is a correspondence theorem. So the moral is uh, that you have to recall is that given a, so any red field is Beltrami field for some metric, any Beltrami field with no zeros is, uh, is the red field uh, for some contact form. And the, the metric, which is called the, the compatible metric, it's, uh, it's defined in a simple way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental problem in this, one of the fundamental problems, I'd say, uh, in this setting, in this uh, theory, is that um, which type of contact structures, uh, in the sense of tight or over twisted, even homotopy, homotopy classes, are engendered by uh, by non vanishing uh, Kell eigenfields, well, Tommy fields, on a given MG. So, so you fix your, your Riemannian manifold, and I will fix uh, soon uh, to be uh, the round sphere and the flat torus. You fix the Riemannian 
uh, structure. Uh, you consider uh, the Kell eigenfields there. And then if there are non-vanishing Beltrami fields uh, in, this, in this geometry, you want to analyze which contact structures uh, can be compatible with this. So this is actually related to a very exciting area, which is called contact Riemannian geometry, probably not very, very well developed, although already there are very interesting theorems in this direction, which is uh, this contact Riemannian geometry and which uh, uh, plans to or, or intends to, to analyze rigidity, flexibility aspects in, in contact uh, topology when you consider also Riemannian metrics. So you, so you are introducing into the picture a, a third object, uh, not only contact form or, or and the red flow, but, uh, but the Riemannian metric. So in this setting, the following definition is, is quite uh, relevant. This was introduced by Ednair Komendacic and Masot a few years ago. So we say that the Riemannian metric on the manifold is weakly compatible with a contact form if there exists a positive function f such that this equation, which is uh, which is actually the Beltrami equation, uh, the first of the Beltrami equations, not, not the equation of the divergence, just star d alpha equal f alpha, where a star is computed uh, with the metric g. So in particular, this, uh, this means that the red field is orthogonal with the metric to the contact structure. So you are introducing an orthogonality here. So uh, so we say that it's weak, it's weakly compatible if you have this uh, this condition. Okay. And uh, so in, moreover, if you ask an additional assumption, if you ask not only this but also that the that the function f is constant, and the norm of alpha is is constant also. This is a stronger uh, condition, so it's called compatible with alpha. And which is uh, this, this compatibility, this definition of compatible metric is, uh, is the usual definition of, uh, of compatible metric, uh, which goes, goes back to Chern and Hamilton, uh, probably in the, in the 60s, and which is already, for example, this metric that I introduced here is compatible uh, with the contact form. Uh, so it's, uh, it's compatible in the sense that the star the alpha given a contact form, if you introduce this metric and you compute star the alpha with this metric, you get here a constant alpha and the modulus of alpha is one. Okay, But it's convenient to relax the condition because this is very strong to demand that the that alpha has constant norm with the metric is, is very strong. So it's, it's, it's convenient to relax the definition and just to say weakly compatible if this condition is satisfied. So actually the remark, the relevant remark here is that if you have a non-vanishing Kell eigenfield on, on a manifold, then the metric G of this uh, with which this field is computed is weakly compatible with the contact form uh, alpha engendered by V because, uh, because it satisfies, uh, so by definition it's a Kell eigenfield, so it satisfies this equation. A star the alpha equal to actually with a constant uh, lambda alpha. And alpha is a contact form, so it, it's 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 actually something uh, which is uh, weaker to be compatible, but a bit stronger to be weakly compatible because this f is constant. So the assumption that is not satisfied is that alpha, in general, does not have the Beltrami field. In general, does not have constant norm. So that's why uh, you need this more general definition. <laughs> okay, but it's so it's important to recall this weak compatibility. And um, so first observation, uh, very important, is that um, with, the, with the stronger definition, uh, compatibility, uh, compatible metrics are very restricted. So we have this beautiful theorem of Etnair, uh, Komendacic and Masot, which says that if you have a contact-free manifold, M uh, with alpha, a contact form, then if there exists a compatible metric, so more than weakly compatible. You need constant norm and you need a constant factor. And this metric, this compatible metric has pinch sectional curvature. So the sectional curvature uh, is positive and is between two constants. This, this uh, four over nine is, um, it can be improved actually. <laughs> but for, for a particular case is that the, the sectional curvature is, uh, is constant, for example, around the sphere. Then this implies, this implies that alpha is, is tight. It's a tight, uh, it defines a tight uh, contact structure. 
and M actually is uh, is S3 or is covered by S3. So uh, for compatible metrics, uh, in particular, you cannot have if you have uh, an over twisted contact structure, you cannot have a compatible metric uh, which uh, on the sphere, for example, uh, which has constant curvature. That's impossible because uh, it must be tight the, the contact form. Mm -hmm. So the open problem that uh, arises here is um, what happens if we uh, consider the, the, the weak definition instead of compatible, weakly compatible metric. So does the contact sphere theorem uh, hold for weakly compatible metrics? And in particular, um, can an over-twisted contact structure be engendered by a non-vanishing Kell Eiger field of the round sphere? That's uh, that's the problem. So just uh, here a short uh, reminder uh, of contact geometry uh, for those who are not so familiar. So here I, I talked about this over-twisted type. So it, this is a well-known dichotomy of contact structures. So over-twisted is defined in terms of the existence of a certain disk uh, embedded in the in the manifold. Uh, so we say that the disk is over-twisted if uh, along its boundary uh, the contact structure, the contact plane distribution is tangent and in the interior of the disk uh, is transverse, except at one point. That's uh, called an over-twisted disk. And if such a disk uh, exists, uh, we say that the structure is over-twisted. If not, it is tight. Okay, so now let me stop uh, here mm, a few seconds in case you want to ask, because now I'm going to state uh, the main theories of this talk. So if you have some questions or, or comments, Anastasia? Mm -hmm. No, there is there is nothing. Anybody nothing? wants to ask a question? Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so now we are ready after this introduction. Um, we are ready to, to introduce the, the main theorems. Uh, that I want to discuss. So, okay, so so our manifolds will be in this talk will be very simple. Yes, uh, S3, the three sphere, and uh, later the, the three torus. So, to describe S3, uh, we describe, this as, describe it as the unit sphere in R4 or in C2. So, you have two complex numbers, set one, set two, in C2. And this, this will be uh, the sphere for us, set, set one square plus set two square equal to one. And uh, so now the first uh, observation is about the, the spectrum of the curl operator on the on S3 with the round metric, the metric inherited by by the by R by R4, which is the round one. So the, the spectrum can be computed uh, completely, and is given by these uh, integers. So it's a positive and negative part. So you have k plus two, uh, plus and minus, and, and k is any uh, any natural number, including the zero. So the spectrum consists of uh, two, three, four, five, and so on. And the negative part is symmetric, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, and so on. Mm -hmm. So this is the spectrum of the of the curl operator. So in this setting, the theorem that uh, we prove with Radu is the following. So first, uh, first observation is that uh, if you if you have a non-vanishing Beltrami field on on S3, a Kell eigen field on S3, then necessarily this eigenvalue lambda must be even. Lambda is equal to two m for for some integer m. So uh, this is a necessary condition, of course, uh, non-vanishing for having a contact structure. So in the case of m equal one, which is which corresponds to the lowest. Uh, eigenvalue or minus one, so eigenvalue two or minus two. Uh, all the Beltrami fields are can be described explicitly in a very simple way. They are actually isometric to the Hopf field, or the or the anti-Hopf. Uh, so by the Hopf field, I, I will write explicitly what the Hopf field is later. But this is simply Hopf field is just well, it's a vector field on on S3, which is tangent to the fibers of Hopf vibration. So all the all the orbits are closed. And, uh, and, and in particular, this is uh, this Hopf field. The, the Hopf field I'm considering here is just the, the rep the rep field associated to the standard tight contact structure on the sphere, just the Hopf field. And the anti-Hopf is the is the is the rep field associated to the 
let's say anti-standard uh, tight uh, anti-standard structure or, or the or the or the tight one composed with an orientation reversing diffeomorphism. I, I write the explicit formulas later. Mm -hmm. So um, so in this case of uh, smaller of the smallest eigenvalues two or minus two, the contact structures are tight. You have the whole field, so only tight uh, contact geometry here, but the point is that um, for m bigger or equal than two, for for each one, for each m, uh, there exists a, a non-vanishing Beltrami field uh, V m that en engenders an over-twisted contact structure, mm -hmm. and actually uh, you can compute the corresponding homotopy classes, which have uh, half index, which is given by this formula. So, for example, for so so you have uh, for m equal two which corresponds to lambda equal four, you would have here a minus one of index minus one, which uh, which means that it is not in the in the class of the the tight contact structure, it's in the class it's in the class of the or of the of the anti tight if you want, of the of the composition of tight with an orientation reversing diffeomorphism. Okay, and you have only uh, classes zero, zero minus one, zero minus one, zero minus one. So zero corresponds to the to the tight class. So uh, so over twisted contact structures in the tight class. So for example, this happens for m equal to three. For eigenvalue lambda equal six, you have Beltrami field, which is over twisted, which defines which engenders an over twisted contact structure, which is in the same uh, motopy class as the tight uh, contact structure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the result, the theorem that we proved. And uh, let me introduce a bit uh, in more detail what I mean by Hof index. So but it's just, uh, it's just the, the, the homotopy class of the corresponding plane distribution. But for this, um, we can describe uh, the sphere. We can uh, introduce coordinates in the sphere that are, that are, are well-known coordinates, the Hof coordinates. Uh, so it, this consists of uh, s, the, the radius between, which is a, a function, which is um, a number between zero and pi over two, and then two angles, phi one and, and phi two, and the description of the sphere uh, using these of coordinates is this one. You parameterize the sphere uh, this way. So set one is equal to this formula, set, set two, and notice just if, if you compute modulus of set one square plus modulus of set two a square, uh, you have cosine a square plus sine a square, so this is equal to one. So, so this indeed uh, uh, leaves on the unit yeah. sphere. Yes, questions? Yeah, there is another question from Robert. Yes. Uh, for the other homotopy classes, the problem is you don't know if there are non-vanishing Beltrami fields. Yes, but yes. Uh, yeah, uh, you can compute. Um, OK, I, I'll consider a, a particular family of non-managing Beltrami fields. We know it's not we know it's not the unique family. There are others, but uh, the problem is to compute the motopy class. Oh, that's not easy. <laughs> but uh, my my feeling is that there must be other uh, motopy classes, not only this zero minus one that we have been able to produce. But I don't know if if anything, if any motopy class can be realized. Maybe not. But you, um, you cannot say, like, for instance, that for some homotopy class, there is no Beltrami field, which is non-vanishing. Mm -hmm. No, we, we don't know yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. For uh, um, Always with the with the round metric, right? Because this is uh, uh, with the compatible, weakly compatible metric. No, no, this we don't know. Mm, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I don't know. Mm. So with this, uh, uh, with these half coordinates, uh, we can write then explicitly these these fields that I mentioned before, this Hof and anti Hof. So uh, so R, uh, this is the sum of these two rotations, and R prime is like is is the same as R but with a minus. So it's like a mirror image of, of this of this R. And in particular, uh, if you compute the curl of R and or and of R prime, then uh, R corresponds to eigenvalue two, and R prime corresponds to eigenvalue minus two. Mm -hmm. Okay, which uh, which is uh, compatible, or which you can understand, for example, because uh, R prime is uh, it, it is obtained uh, from R by composing with a with a diffeomorphism that in, inverts uh, orientation, a very explicit uh, diffeomorphism. So with this diffeomorphism inverting the orientation, you change the sign also of the 
of the eigenvalue of the curl operator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so then you can define, uh, uh, you can compute this this Hof index, this uh, homotopy class. Uh, of course, you, to compute the homotopy class, you have to fix a trivialization of the tangent bundle, and this always exists because it's a free manifold. But uh, just to uh, to be precise, uh, in which uh, to, to know which uh, trivialization we are fixing for the computations. We, we just fix uh, the, ortho the orthonormal global, global frame of hop fields, which is this R, and uh, then X1 and X2, which are like rotations, uh, 90 degree rotations of this R. So this gives you uh, a, a basis of the tangent bundle of S3, and all of them are, are Hopf because uh, if you compute the integral curves of X1 and X2, they are always uh, periodic. And they are isometric. This is isometric to the x1 and x2 are isometric to, to r. There is an isometry that transforms one into the other. Mm -hmm. So the Hoff index simply will be, uh, we will compute it as uh, the Hoff invariant or the degree of the map S3 uh, to S2 defined, well, in the usual way, in the usual way, but considering the coordinates with respect to this uh, trivialization of the tangent bundle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, a corollary, uh, this was just uh, to introduce some notation that uh, I use in the statement, the, the R, the R prime, the homotopy class, the Hopf invariant. So just a corollary of, the, of this uh, theorem that I mentioned uh, before is that, uh, in particular, the round metric is weakly compatible with an overtwisted contact structure. So in this sense, um, the pinching theorem that uh, I mentioned before that holds for compatible metrics uh, this shows that it cannot hold uh, for weakly compatible metrics, at least uh, as stated, maybe with extra assumptions, it could hold. Because uh, we have a Beltrami field, we have Beltrami fields that are non-vanishing, and uh, then the, the contact structure uh, is weakly compatible with the round metric, but and but they are over-twisted. Okay. So this is this concerns the theorems on, on S3. Now, the second manifold that I will uh, consider is the, the torus, uh, the three torus, so R3 quotient with 2 pi set, uh, endowed with the flat metric. In this case, the spectrum is also, is also explicit, and you can compute. It's for any uh, integer, well, in, in the grid of, in the grid set three of integers. So the eigenvalues are given, are, they always have sign, uh, so plus or minus, and it's just a plus minus the absolute value of k for any k. This is the this is the set of eigenvalues, and uh, in this case the theorem that we we prove it's a bit weaker than what we got for the for the sphere. So first uh, we show that for each eigenvalue, any eigenvalue, there exists uh, an unvanishing Beltrami field engendering a typed contact structure for all of them. Remember that in the sphere theorem we have we were able to prove uh, tight contact structures in the trivial case, let's say, in the case lambda equal two minus two. We don't know what happens for bigger lambda. We don't know if you could have tight uh, contact structure engendered by Beltrami fields on the sphere of higher eigenvalue. On the torus, we know that this happens for all the eigenvalues. You have the tight and actually uh, all the tight contactomorphic classes can be realized or are realized this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I, I am saying what I mean by all tight contactomorphic classes. I'm, I'm recalling it. And uh, second, about uh, about overtwisted, what we proved is that there exists infinitely many eigenvalues lambda l uh, on the torus and corresponding Beltrami fields v l corresponding eigenfields such that the engender contact structure is overtwisted. So here in this second statement, uh, the difference with the, with the sphere case is that, uh, well, first, we were not able to prove that there are overtwisted contact structures engendered by the Beltrami fields for all the eigenvalues, or at least all high enough eigenvalues, as in this case. In this case, is for any eigenvalue uh, for which uh, non-vanishing Beltrami fields exist. Uh, so you have the the necessary condition of being even, okay? But for all eigenvalues, uh, you have over-twisted structures. Here you have a sequence of eigenvalues, 
for which you can prove that they are over twisted and second we cannot uh, prove or we cannot compute the the homotopy class the hof index it's uh, more complicated here in, in this part the proof is existential it's not um, it's not explicit construction as in the previous theorem so we were not able to to compute the, the classes okay. and here just a reminder is just well first uh, i introduced the uh, the notion of contactomorphic simply we say that two contact structures are contactomorphic if there is a diffeomorphism transforming one into the other the, the push forward of one is the other contact uh, distribution and uh, and tight contact structures on on the on the t3 on on the three torus they are classified up to contactomorphism and they are they are all homotopic but not contactomorphic and uh, and they are and, and the model is, is this for each m you have this this contact structure and and they are different they define different classes contactomorphic classes and uh, you realize in the theorem we prove that you realize everything mm -hmm. and th this first part actually is quite simple we'll, we'll see later mm -hmm. okay so let's uh, so if if there are some questions about uh, these statements you can ask me uh, now if not i i'm going to uh, to introduce a bit the, the proof of in the sphere, the sphere case. So some questions, Anastasia? Yeah. No, nothing. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's say a few words about uh, about the sphere proof. So okay, so let's um, so we introduce these coordinates, these half coordinates, uh, which, which have uh, they, they have a very clear uh, interpretation. So this S so the coordinates so in these coordinates you are uh, you are looking at the sphere as uh, uh, as uh, the, the sphere minus if you consider the sphere minus the half link then this is diffeomorphic so you have the sphere you you extract the half link this is diffeomorphic to a torus times an interval right so uh, so this torus is parameterized by the coordinates phi1 and phi2 these are simply these coordinates the parameterization of these torus and the interval, uh, the, the level sets of this uh, of this foliation, are parameterized by the function s. And the, the extremal points zero and pi over two correspond uh, to the Hof link. So that's why I say here that uh, this set, the set s equals zero and the set s equal pi two, is the Hof link in S three. Okay. So uh, you can write the, the metric, the, the round metric in, in Hof coordinates, and it has this expression here. Okay, coordinates S, phi1 and phi2. Now you can write, so you have the Hof basis that I introduced uh, before, very explicit basis. R is, uh, is the vector field that I mentioned here. Uh, the rotation phi1 plus the rotation phi2. And then you uh, you rotate this R, you, you apply some isometries to this R, and you, you get X1 and X2. This gives you an orthonorm, an orthonormal global frame. So you can write any field, in particular any Beltrami field, in, in terms of this basis. So V is equal to FR plus F1, X1 plus F2, X2, where F, F1, and F2 are functions, are functions on the manifold. So the key proposition, or a first key proposition in the proof is the following. So if if you do the computations, just uh, write the Beltrami equation uh, using this this um, this decomposition of the of the vector field in terms of this uh, of this global parallelism of this R x one and x two of this global frame. You you check your you can prove that these three functions these three coefficients are eigen functions of the Laplacian on the sphere on the round sphere with uh, with this eigenvalue lambda times lambda minus two okay where lambda is the is the eigenvalue of the kel operator so re recall that remember that kel of v is equal to lambda v so in particular for example if lambda is equal to two that's uh, that corresponds to the whole fields so this means that these functions have eigenvalue zero but functions of eigenvalue zero are constants so this just means that any, so the lambda equal to Beltrami fields is a, is a linear combination of R, X1, and X2 with constants. This we already knew uh, by all the reasons, just by directly checking this, 
that any Beltrami field with lambda equal to, it's just a sum, it's a, it's a linear combination of the whole fields. Okay, so uh, using this uh, key proposition, we can prove the first claim in the theorem. So assume, uh, okay, so, so let's prove uh, that lambda, if lambda is odd, then V has zeros, must have zeros. So uh, first observation using the proposition is that since this, these functions are eigenfunctions of the Laplacian on the sphere, then eigenfunctions of the Laplacian on the on the round sphere, they are of course uh, restrictions on the sphere of homogeneous harmonic polynomials in R4. That's a general property. Okay. So uh, so since uh, since the degree of this homogeneous harmonic polynomial is lambda minus two, and lambda is assumed to be odd, this lambda minus two is odd. So it's the restriction of three homogeneous harmonic polynomials of odd degree. So now you can define a map from R4 to R3, given by F, F1, and F2. And uh, you can apply a fixed point theorem, a borsuk ulan theorem, to this map with odd degree. And uh, this uh, gives you easily that, uh, that this map must have uh, an unempty zero set, which, uh, of course, these are homogeneous polynomials. So this gives you a zero set uh, in any ray, in any ray that passes from the origin and and lives in, in R4. So it gives you zeros of V in uh, in S3. Okay, zeros of this triple of functions. Okay, so, so this is just uh, a, a simple consequence of this key proposition. Mm -hmm. The fact that uh, you need even lambda for having uh, non-vanishing Beltrami fields. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so to prove the second part, uh, the construction of overtwisted, uh, contact structures uh, engendered by Beltrami fields on the sphere, you need this construction. It's a construction that uh, we introduced with Boris Kessin and Sergei Kusin and a few years ago. And it's just this claim, which is not difficult to, to check. So if you have two functions, two real valid functions, f and g, smooth, then this vector field, uh, which is, uh, so it's, uh, so it's, uh, the function f evaluated uh, in cosine square of s, s is the half coordinate, uh, times r plus g cosine of square, g of cosine square of s, r prime, this vector field, this combination of r and r prime with this non constant coefficients in general, is a steady Euler flow on the round sphere. It's a stationary solution of the Euler equation on the round sphere, which is not Beltrami in general. This is, you compute the, the Bernoulli function, something, an object that is called. The Bernoulli function. This is not this is not constant in general, but uh, the first observation is that for suitable choice of of f and g, v is indeed a Beltrami field. So uh, if you take lambda equal to m, the even uh, eigenvalues, and you take uh, f uh, that depends on m, g that depends on m, to be uh, this of these functions here. <clears throat> so this pm minus one or pm minus two, these are uh, particular cases of uh, of this family p star one one uh, is the family of orthogonal Jacobi polynomials uh, of degree uh, m minus one in this case and m minus two in this case. It's a very explicit family. I, I will I will show you a few examples later. So there are polynomials in terms of these trigonometric functions one minus two cosine square of s. And um, with these choices, you can show that uh, this V constructed this way with this FM and with this GM, they are Beltrami fields. They satisfy the Beltrami equation for this uh, lambda, lambda equal to 2M. Okay. So a first observation from this is that since Jacobi polynomials, uh, the zeros of Jacobi polynomials have some interesting properties. In particular, they, they never coincide. The zeros of M minus two of the polynomial m minus two are different from from those of the polynomial m minus one, and they are uh, between two zeros of m minus one. There is one zero of m minus two. They are like interlaced. Then you can check that the Beltrami field constructed this way is not vanishing any Beltrami field, and uh, you can check other properties. A uh, first property is that uh, the Hopf link is a set of periodic orbits of this vector field uh, Vm. Second is that um, Vm is integrable in the sense that uh, all the level sets of the 
of the coordinate s are invariant to right. This is general fact. This is not here. Not you are not using these orthogonal polynomials. This happens for all members of this family. S is a first integral of um, of any v of this form. And finally, which is very important uh, later, is that uh, vm is s1 invariant in the sense that it commutes with the Hopf field or with the red field of the tight the standard tight. Okay, so vm, a commutator of vm and r is equal to zero. Okay, so the second step is uh, to show that the contact forms engendered by this vm are indeed over twisted, which is the claim. So the contact form is this, just you can compute, you have, you have v, you have vm, which is of this form with this fm and gm. You compute using the metric, the, the one form is this one, okay, these coordinates. Um, it is contact because V does not vanish. And uh, moreover, uh, the observation is that uh, it is S1 invariant. If you compute the lead derivative of this one form with respect to R, with respect to the red field, this is zero. Mm -hmm. So why this is important, this lead derivative or the, this S1 invariance? Because we are going to use this criterion of Giroux for contact form, for S1 invariant contact forms, which says the following. So, uh, so, so we have. So, if we consider this object here, which is called a characteristic uh, surface, so it's the set of points <coughs> on the sphere such that uh, at each point, R, the symmetry, uh, the Hopf field, the, the red field of the tight, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, this R is tangent uh, to the contact distribution defined by this. So you, you define the set of points of tangency of R and the contact distribution. So the criterion is that uh, the form, the, the, the contact form alpha m is tight if and only if this projection is the empty set, where this projection is just uh, the Hopf vibration, the standard projection of S3 onto S2 given by the Hopf vibration, okay, which is given by R, okay, by the uh, by the base space of R or the leaf space of R. Okay. So this is the criterion, and we are going to apply this criterion to our contact forms. So if you want, if we want to check that they are over twisted, we have to see whether or not this uh, this set, this characteristic surface, this projected characteristic surface, is empty or not. So the the point is that uh, since we have very explicit expressions, we can compute uh, the characteristic. Uh, surface and it consists of toroidal surfaces. Gamma R consists of, of a finite number of tori in, in S3. Uh, the values of S of this tori are given by this equation, okay, fm cosine squared. This, uh, this is a polynomial equation. Uh, you can check that this is this has solutions always. And, uh, and actually the projection, uh, which is a set of circles, is not empty. Uh, if m is equal, if m is bigger than one, so uh, so you conclude applying Giroux, Giroux's criterion, this first criterion, that uh, alpha m is over twisted. So with this, uh, you are you are done in this part. So finally, the last computation is the Hopf invariant of the map, and uh, for this, um, okay, you, you have the map which uh, in these coordinates reads this way. So you have the, the three functions f, f1, f2 that I introduced uh, before. So the and the key lemma to compute the Hopf invariant of this is that uh, uh, Vm, the, the Beltrami field, is homotopic through non-vanishing fields, and this is a very explicit homotopy. This is not an existential result. You, you can write down explicitly the homotopy. Two, uh, in the case that m is odd, this vm is homotopic, is homotopic to r, to the to the field to the red field of the tight, and to r prime. If m is even, r prime the red field of the of the anti tight if you want to call it this way. So uh, since uh, it's the Hopf index of r, of course, of course is is zero because you are defining the so it's part of the, already of the um, already of the trivialization of the tangent bundle R so it's uh, so the Hopf index of of this uh, field is zero in this uh, with respect to this basis and uh, you can compute that the Hopf index of R prime 
is minus one. This is an explicit computation using Whitehead's formula for the for the Hopf index. Then you prove the claim. So you have zero and minus one for R and R prime. And since since you have this homotopy, you have that uh, under homotopy. Of course, these Hopf indexes are preserved, and you are able to to conclude uh, the statement uh, that I stated uh, before. Mm -hmm. Okay. So final remark is that for negative eigenvalues, you have similar uh, constructions. Um, and uh, final uh, comment here is that, um, well, these are just two examples. So V2, the, the Beltrami field associated to the, to the eigenvalue 4 is, is this one, the one that we constructed. And the eigen, eigenvalue 6 uh, is this one. Okay, and there are okay. There is also a sort of geometric rigidity, but I'll skip. I'll skip this. So now uh, concerning so Anastasia, maybe I have um, even less than five minutes, right? Uh, three minutes. Or? Well, yeah, you have a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, in I'll five minutes four. I'm done. So yeah. um, okay, so so for for T three, uh, the first claim is that for any eigenvalue you have a typed uh, contact Feel structure. Feel free to go over time. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Feel free to go over time. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. We are free. Uh -huh. Perfect, perfect. Anyway, I'm, I'm almost done. <laughs> okay. So for the, okay, for the torus, um, the first claim uh, was that uh, for any eigenvalue of the Kell operator on the torus, you have typed the Trami fields. This is explicit construction. So, so you can check, to, so, so let's write explicitly this vector field. Of the torus, so so you have cosine ks b plus this other thing here. B is a is a vector, a non-zero vector in R three, which is orthogonal any zero vector, which is orthogonal to to k. K is the set of integers whose modulus gives a uh, eigenvalue. Okay, so you consider this field v k here, and uh, you can check this these properties. The first property is that it has it has constant modulus. Which is equal to b, so it's not zero in particular. It defines a contact structure. The second one is that um, the associated map is homotopically trivial. So this has so any vector field in this family v k is homotopic to a constant. And um, and also third property is that the associated contact structures are typed, and this is this is not complicated uh, because um, you can relate this uh, the, the the dual one forms of this with the standard typed contact forms in the covering the universal covering of T3 which is R3 so you prove in the universal covering tightness and this of course go, goes down uh, to T3 mm -hmm. and uh, moreover in particular for some particular cases of these constants so k equals 0 0 m integer m and be this uh, field 0 1 0 you can find or you find uh, you substitute here you, you find the standard family of contact structures this family that um, i wrote it here um, somewhere here so so you get uh, exactly these uh, contact uh, forms okay mm -hmm. so so this this first part is very simple it's just based for the torus the, the part the proof of the first part it's based on, on a very explicit expression and a simple computation. Mm. So the second part, sorry. Mm. So to prove the second claim, uh, which is that uh, there exists infinitely many eigenvalues such that the corresponding structure, contact structure is over twisted, you use, uh, you use uh, another different family of Beltrami fields that are still S1 invariant. So <clears throat> S1 meaning uh, that commute with with the translations in the x3 direction okay and so you, you endow uh, you, you introduce coordinates x1 x2 x3 standard coordinates in the three torus so you consider vector fields of this form which is um so you have the in the third component you have lambda f lambda is second value and uh, the first two components it's uh, like a hamiltonian system okay mm -hmm. And this f is not uh, is not anything. This f is a function which is a lambda square eigenfunction of the flat Laplacian on T two. Okay, so so maybe uh, now uh, Eva and Cedric, you are now uh, 
thinking about the B Beltrami fields and uh, see the analogy. Uh, but here, uh, this is not, um, it's different in the sense that uh, this is not, uh, okay, this is defined everywhere, is that there are no singularities. And, uh, and the vector field is not, uh, this is not a, a B field because you, you don't have the X3 multiplied uh, here. So it's not, it's not tangent to the, uh, to the X3 equals zero, okay? But there is a, there is a sort of, uh, of analogy, okay? So, so you have this, uh, these vector fields, uh, V, and uh, the lemma, which is uh, key. Uh, so, so you can understand this as a recipe to construct uh, Beltrami fields in the three torus. So construct, uh, take any lambda square eigenfunction of the, la of the flat Laplacian on, on T2, and now, if you have this, you you write this expression, and this and this turns out to be a Beltrami field on the three toes. That's the recipe. Okay. So the lemma is that uh, it's a lemma in spectral geometry. Uh, so nothing to do a priori with uh, with these Beltrami fields. Is that there exists an infinite sequence of eigenvalues and corresponding eigenfunctions of the Laplacian on the two torus, uh, such that uh, for each eigenvalue, uh, the nodal set of of the function of the eigenfunction has some properties. So first property is that it's regular, so non-zero gradient. Second property is that it's disconnected, so it consists of several connected components. Third property is that one of these components, uh, so it's a circle that bounds a, that bounds a disk. So it contains, it contains a contractible component, a circle that bounds a disk. So, so you have this, this strange lemma. For the moment, you don't see why this could be relevant for the overtwisted stuff, it's just uh, a curious property, a curious construction. You can construct Beltrami fields. Sorry, you can construct eigenfunctions of the Laplacian on T2, whose nodal set has these strange properties. Nodal set is the zero set. I, oh. I recall that the nodal set is the zero set of the function FL. So, so let let's see what happens if we, uh, if in our recipe we take this FL, this family of FL and we construct our, our Beltrami field. So the first observation is that the Beltrami field has eigenvalue a square root of lambda L, of course, uh, because this lambda L, uh, because you have the, the connection is with lambda square, so it's a square root. And more important is that it is non-vanishing. This Beltrami field is non-vanishing because um, you see that this vanishes where F is zero, at the points or at the lines, actually, because this has symmetry, where f is zero and where the gradient of f is zero. But this does not happen because the nodal set, the zero set of f, is regular. So the gradient part never vanishes where f vanishes. Okay, so that's why it's non vanishing. Yeah. Yes? Um, no, some questions? No? Mm -hmm. Second is that uh, there is an, an S1 invariance with respect to the action generated just by these rotations, partial x3. Okay, so you compute, um, so it's uh, the, the lead derivative of, of the correspond of the associated contra contact form with respect to this field is zero, you have S1 invariance. Here the projection is very simple, just the, proje the projection onto the, the two torus, the first two components. And third is this uh, Giroud characteristic surface. <clears throat> Remember that, um, this characteristic surface is just the set of points uh, on the on the three torus in this case, <clears throat> such that uh, the symmetry, uh, in this case partial x3, is tangent to the contact distribution defined by eta l. So this gamma l set, when you project x1 x2 projection, it's it turns out to be precisely the nodal set of the function. So it's the zero set of the function FL. Mm -hmm. So you understand uh, pretty well in the sense that if you understand the zero set of your eigenfunction, you know what the what this projection is. So now we apply. And of course, yes. one question. Yes. Uh, uh, so this game you can, of course, extend it in the. You have used strongly that the vector field doesn't Sorry, uh, doesn't uh, vanish. So you are using a yes, strongly yes. that you are regular. No, can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So did you no, I, now I cannot extension hear of this game to your oh, sorry uh, that you are using a strong no, yes, you yeah, hear me? Sure. 
okay, that you are strongly using the the fact that the red back profit mm -hmm. doesn't vanish. Right, in this right, right. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Did you think about the this this paper that you are writing with with Selvin <laughs> and Eva? <laughs> Professor Miranda. <laughs> Professor Miranda. <laughs> Did you think what what would happen if you relax the condition uh, for this B contact? Sorry, I think I didn't hear. It. There are some problems with the connections because I I didn't. Maybe it's my after all. Maybe the connection problem is my problem. Yeah, yes. Do you hear me now? But it cuts, maybe my it cuts sometimes. Okay. So, uh, so you said yeah, it it. Yeah, I have to be <laughs> close to my microphone. I think or shout. <laughs> no, did you think like if you could try to extend this argument to the B case? Ah. <laughs> Maybe it's a question for the end, for the end of your. No, um, it, but it, it's it's quite different. So it, in a sense, it's um, yeah. okay. It's similar because you have a, a, a structure of this vector field V that it looks like more or less, but uh, but it turns out that it's a big difference to have the B the B tangent bundle. I mean, because in the B you have the x three here, right? You have the that this vanishes. Yes. So for. In, you cannot argue no. the same. I mean, the argument will fail. Exactly. In the first yes, step. because uh, then uh, the field there is tangent to the uh, to the critical surface. Uh, here is not here is not tangent. Uh, you have if you restrict to to x three, this is not. Uh, I mean, the, this component is not is not zero actually. Uh, so uh, so it's quite uh, yeah, it's quite different. But it's true that uh, in both uh, uh, studies uh, you use or you you make use of. Uh, of some spectral properties, or you, you are able to to, to yes. use some properties, Feigen functions of the Laplace and Orlando square. And for for example, for this first part here, the regular, uh, it's um, well we don't need Morse, so in this sense it's it's easier for for Eva and Cedric stuff. We need Morse here. Just regular is is enough, uh, uh, but it's it's an argument, also genericity argument yeah. of this type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay. some techniques could be similar, but uh, at the end the, the statements are, are quite different. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. the so the criterion. So so you have to apply a second criterion. The first criterion here of Giroud that I stated before doesn't say anything, doesn't apply. So the criterion is that so if you consider the base of this vibration, this T two of the projection, so T two, and you consider the complement. Of the projection of your characteristic surface, so you consider this set in the in the torus in the two torus. Then, if this set has a component that is diffeomorphic to a disk, then uh, the claim is that the contact structure uh, defined by by the one form is tagged only if uh, so. It's it's not a, an equivalence. It's not if and only if, but it's a necessary condition only. If uh, if this projection, if this set is connected, if it contains just one connected component, so now you start um, to imagine why it was important in this strange lemma to have this uh, fact that the nodal set is disconnected and contains a contractible connected component because we want to apply this Giroud criterion, second criterion, and then um, since we have that this pi, this projection, is the nodal set, as I said before, the characteristic surface is the nodal set, then uh, by the construction of FL, it is disconnected. We constructed these functions to be disconnected, and uh, the complement contains a disk, also by our construction. So you apply Giroud, and you get uh, over-twisted, over-twisted structure. So a first remark, remark is that um, this is weaker than the result for the sphere uh, because uh, so it's not constructive. The existence, the, the proof of this lemma, uh, you don't give explicitly these functions FL uh, as we did, uh, for example, in the in the three case. So we cannot compute the homotopy classes. That's very difficult. And uh, and also, in fact, uh, it relies on on a on a non on an existential but not constructive uh, technique, which is uh, a result from the PhD thesis of, of Francisco Torres de Lizaur, uh, which we call the inverse uh, localiza localization technique. So this is a, a method that we use uh, to prove this lemma. And um, and uh, and then uh, consequence of this is that we cannot compute the Hopf index 
of the overtwisted contact structure and um, because of this not explicitness maybe with some other tools uh, because uh, there are some connections between not completely obvious but there are some connections between the nodal set of this um, of this function fl this nodal set and the homotopy class there are some connections uh, but uh, a bad point also is that um, is that you don't control the whole nodal set of your eigenfunctions. You can prove that your nodal set, your zero set, contains, uh, is disconnected and it contains a contractible component, whatever, but you don't know if there are other components, uh, how many components, for example, 100 or whatever, that you, you don't control. You can control, you can control only the nodal set in, in a piece of the manifold, in a small part of the manifold. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to finish uh, this talk with a few open problems I already mentioned more or less. So the first one uh, concerning the sphere. Uh, so we don't know if there exists time typed uh, curl eigenfields or Trami fields on the sphere with eigenvalue that is not uh, the lowest eigenvalues, two or minus two. And I would say that yes, that probably they exist, but uh, we cannot construct uh, them. Mm -hmm. A second problem, of course, uh, this was already in the mind of Robert. Hopefully, Robert will be able to 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 settle this this problem to <laughs> to prove uh, the result. Is um, if if uh, if any over twisted contact structure can be engendered by a Beltrami field, or at least if there are structures, if over twisted uh, contact structures in Hof classes, whatever Hof class, I don't know, uh, with Hof index. Uh, any even integer bigger than four, I don't know. Yeah, I, I am just saying stupid things. Maybe you can prove that this cannot happen. But my guess again is that probably you can realize everything, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third problem concerning the, the three torus is, uh, of course, which over twisted contact structures can be engendered by Beltrami fields on T3 because in this setting, we don't even know uh, about the the multiple classes, about the Hof index. Okay, so uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And now, and Cedric, hopefully also congratulations, but let's wait uh, a bit, uh, one day at least. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for a wonderful talk. Thank you. Uh, there are any questions on this point? You can still ask them probably uh, if not then we uh we'll pause and we'll resume in 10 minutes with a chat of mm -hmm. course robert do you have comments <laughs>